Okay, so here's a few updates uh, with my PlayStation 3 um, cooling progress that I've gotten so far. I was a bit worried, as you could tell from my last video, that my PS3 was overheating, maybe working a little too hard, and I wasn't too successful with reapplying thermal compound. So after about five attempts or so of reapplying thermal compound, and I decided I would take uh, more unorthodox uh, measures here and and go ahead and, and go more radical. I also went and bought some new Arctic Silver 5. I was using older Arctic Silver 5. So I went and bought some newer Arctic Silver 5 at the Radio Shack and then I also did uh, two other things. So basically three, three modifications in total. Um, one was I simply reapplied the thermal compound. I took off the RSX processor's uh, heat spreader and I applied new thermal compound to the memory uh, memory chips around the four corners of the processor as well as on the die on the center and then I also of course reapplied the thermal compound on top of the heat spreaders uh, both the cell and the the GPU RSX of course and then I uh, and then I also put little bits of thermal compound, just little smudges of it, on the heat pads inside the system, just on the one side that wasn't sticking to whatever it was. So like if I pulled off the, the metal casing and it was stick the thermal pads were sticking to the metal casing, I'd put just a teeny bit. My cat really wants to jump up on my table here. But I'd put just a little bit of uh, thermal compound on uh, the little pads and it's Arctic Silver 5 so you really want to be careful you don't want to put too much because the stuff is conductive um, so yeah I did that and then I added some uh, some little bits of uh, cooling ventilation here kinda of hard to see but basically there's a ring like a star pattern there and basically right, a, right behind that ring there where I put those holes is the internal fan. I didn't want to go too radical with this. I didn't want to chunk, like cut out a huge uh, area there. So, because I didn't want to really like alter the the flow of the inside. I just wanted enough holes there, enough ventilation where I could draw in some external air, and maybe you know bring in some cooler. I just didn't want it to alter the flow because I still wanted the flow to be strong enough inside to where the fan would be pushing it you know in the areas it was meant to be pushed over components that it was meant to be pushed over um, I also added a few little holes here along the top of this lip for ventilation I want to keep my PlayStation vertical considering heat rises and it seems to be dispersing out the back and the top pretty well so um, the last mod I did was I made the power supply external. I did a lot of research looking at the forums as well as uh, some other YouTubers and uh, I'll put a link to another YouTuber in here that, that really had a, a design pretty much similar to this. Um, but pretty much this power supply right here sits right next to the Blu-ray drive, right on top of the motherboard, right above uh, you know where the heat sink back plates are so or where the G CPU back plates are and it heats the crap out of the system I mean your blu-ray drives getting hot your the back of the motherboards getting hot everything's getting hot and this thing gets you know super hot by itself here and without this being um, laid down on the metal internals of this system here the heat when it's alone like this uh, will heat this up super hot and you know the components inside of here probably shouldn't get super hot so what I did here is I rigged this little uh, this little fan here I have everything rigged in there I've got this plastic container uh, no it's not gonna shock me or anything like that it's grounded and I basically attached a heat sink on the top of there I got a fan there it's running through separate just standard uh, DC power adapter you plug into your wall here I'll go ahead and plug it in and you can bear, you can hear it now spinning. If I have that plugged in, this thing does not get hot at all. It it has a very slight warmth to it, and it actually stays cool more than warm uh, all around it. And so yeah, uh, the power switch is right over here. Ooh, yanked it a little bit. Power switch is right there, and 
I just zip tied things up. And this really, you know, isn't too bad to move and get my cat away from it. Not that it would shock her, but you know. Uh, and then in the bottom there, I just put a copper plate because this is a plastic container. But this thing does not get hot at all now. And uh, as long as I have that fan going. And the model number on this particular power supply is... Uh, I can't really see it too well. I'll, I'll put a link in the description, or I'll put a uh, note in the description below explaining what this power supply is. There's different versions of power supplies. And from what I understand, most, if not all, of the US uh, 60 gigs had this particular power supply stock in the system. And it runs, like I said, super, super hot. Like, if I had the system on for 20 minutes and I touched this thing when it, when it was in that system before, I could literally, in certain areas, only put my finger on it for a couple seconds before having to lift it off. Like, it was that hot. Other areas, you know, were still hot, but there were certain areas on there you could only touch for a couple seconds. So, yeah, so now we're in a place where my system's running a lot cooler. Um, I'm The next project I'm doing is I'm going to make a vertical stand for it uh, so that it'll hold it vertically while still providing a bit of um, stability to it. Basically what I plan to do here is take these, I'll, they're metal like... Uh, reinforcement things here for shelves or something uh, made out of steel and I'm gonna put like little I'm gonna spray paint them black and put little like rubberized posts not too tall that the system will sit in between and then it'll raise it up off the ground a little bit and then keep it stable so it won't tilt if ever it tilts so that should work out um, one little tip I wanted to add in it might help somebody out out there it might help a few people out uh, basically with thermal compound if you don't want to go to this extreme or you know you're not crazy like me and, and waste a bunch of hours um, you can and you're having prob uh, trouble with your thermal compound this is like a big issue here and I I had a lot of problems with it a uh, little tip I basically drew up some diagrams here and these diagrams the red will represent the paste the black will represent the heat sink square where you know the little squares that meet up with the with the CPU and the CPU will represent the green or the green will represent represent the CPU um, basically so what, what I did here was say for instance this this is my theory okay a lot of people have these theories where Thermal compound should be spread this way and this way only on certain processors. And that might be true, you know, if your processor is perfect. But the bottom line is, uh, people's PlayStations and their heat sinks aren't the same. Everybody's is, is a little bit different. And the, the little variations in the flatness of these where they're going to meet up changes. So just because your friend used like a line on his processor or whatever and he got great results doesn't mean you're going to get great results. So what I suggest people do is uh, after trying it myself is when you have your and you're going to apply new thermal paste put a tiny little like thin amount here so you know put you know a little line there and then get your credit card and then spread it out so that it's nice and flat and even and it's a thin amount not you're not seeing the metal behind there but it's nice and thin and then what you should do is take your heat sink and take the fan off of it stick your two fingers underneath the back plates of the CP or the processors and put your other two fingers on the top of the heat sink F mash it down on there nice and firm tighten it up and then uh, after about a couple minutes, pull it back off and see what your how your thermal compound spread from your processor to your heat sink. Now, if your heat sink did what mine did, basically it looked like this, okay? After I did that, it looked like this. I had a little bit in all the corners here of my heat sink. So that meant this whole area right here had a gap where it was like you know further away from the the processor and basically it just wasn't having any sort of uh, absorption into the heat sink so what I tried was the next time what I did was um, what I did when I applied it to the uh, 
the processor. So if you had that problem where you're getting it on the corners after you put a thin amount of compound on the on the processor, then what I would do is I would take a little bit of thermal compound, put it on the corners like that, and then use like a little bit of a credit card or whatever, and then you know make it smooth like just as thin as over here, but only on the corners where it was touching there good. And then in the center, I would put like a blob of thermal paste right there. Maybe, you know, maybe a pea size amount. You don't want to go too big. But then what will happen is when you mash your heat sink back on, uh, basically what will happen is you'll get your, your new, um, if I can do this with one hand here, having troubles okay so your new the way that it'll spread this time is these corners here will be nice and making contact and there won't be a bunch of thermal compound they'll be nice and, and flat and they'll be making good contact and then the center is gonna mush out and fill out like most of that gap there and you know some people are gonna be like well there's gonna be a too much thermal compound basically that's gonna be way better than that and the bright side of this here is this isn't gonna really have air bubbles in the center of it too so that's nice yeah you might have a gap but for people that don't want to lap their heat sink in their processors and that's a really unforgiving process if you screw that up like you're gonna have problems. Lapping is basically when you try to sand your heat sink flat or your processor flat. So uh, like let's let's give another scenario here. So you put the thermal compound on nice and flat here. You know, it's covering up the whole thing. And then you stick it on your heat sink and maybe it looks like maybe it looks like this where you're making good contact over here on that side for whatever reason and then maybe like down here on the corner so the next time what you would want to do is because it's reversed you would want to have a little bit like flat thermal compound here spread out with your credit card and then uh, over here this would be really flat because it's flipped right this this right here is going to be flipped so this is going to be a thin amount because it, it fit perfectly when it was thin over here like that. But then over here, you might want to put a little, a little like line, really skinny line going down here like that. And then when that spreads out, it might look like, it might look like this, you know, like this side's going to be good. It's going to be nice and even. This corner is going to be good. And then that line right there is going to smush out like that so that, you know, it's filling out most of that. And basically what you're doing is you're making a map of how your thermal compound is meeting up with your heat sink. And then you're adjusting how much you put in certain areas uh, strategically, specifically for your system and your processor. So that's what you're going for. Uh, you don't want to use too much thermal paste, but you still, you know, coverage is better than no coverage right there like that. So I suggest, you know, if you're having problems, maybe give it a shot. Uh, this seems to be a big issue here where you just have the corners. So yeah, like use a thin amount on the corners and then put a little uh, pea size amount on the center so that you get something like that. And just for your information, the uh, the RSX processor on the corners of the processor, there is little chips, they're memory modules, and they're located uh, in each of the corners here, like this. And then right in the center, there's like a diamond. The diamond is your like your main processor die is what it's called I think and then these are your memory modules here so it is important or useful to have some sort of connection on those memory modules because after all the whole heat spreader 
the whole metal cap that goes over this, it's all spreading throughout the entire thing. Some people are like, you just need that right there. Well, if you can have good contacts here as well as these corners, you're going to have the best transfer of heat. Anyways, um, hopefully that'll help somebody out. I, I might sound really weird, maybe you won't understand it, but I'm sure there'll be some people out there that get what I'm trying to say. Uh, anyways, I uh, hope you enjoy it, and I'll keep you posted on how my PS3 goes. Hopefully it lasts a while, but you never know how it goes. I'll catch you guys later.